Where is that thing? Where is what I'm looking for? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's an older one. Just give me a second. So many great photos. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Now this is technically a review about the Andy Cine R1 RGB pocket light, but I thought let's do something out of the ordinary. Let's do a cool LED portrait. And since I'm a fan of Brad Pitt and I follow him on Instagram, I saw this post of his a couple weeks back and I thought to myself, I could replicate that with relatively cheap RGB LED lights. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I used two of the R1s and a third one from Andy Cine to create this portrait. I'm going to show you how I set it up and what I did in post to get this result. So let's get going. Now the key light that you can see on the left is positioned right next to the camera at head height. It should have come in higher and at an angle to create more shadows under the brow ridge, the nose and on the neck. But I didn't realize it in time. So this is where it's set during the shoot. The LED light that you can see on the right here is my first R1 RGB pocket light. It illuminated the left side of the talent. It's higher than head height and comes in at an angle. It's relatively close to him, closer than the other one, because it has to hit the side of his face, create a highlight on the nose and reach the front of the jacket to create nice highlights there. Now the second R1 LED light that you can see on the left side of the frame here actually illuminated the right side of the talent. But because I didn't want the highlight on the nose, I had to position it further back. On the other hand, that meant no nice highlights on the right side of the jacket. So I had to do an extra shot in which I positioned the second R1 RGB LED light exactly opposite the first one, which messed up the lighting on the face, but gave me nice highlights on the jacket. I knew then in post I had to composite both these shots into one. Now the camera that I used, that was my Sony a7 III with the 24-70 f2.8 GM at 70 millimeters. As far as the settings go, I shot at an f5 because I didn't want the eyeballs to be in focus but the tip of the nose to be out of focus. I kept the ISO as low as possible, having me end up at 250 because I didn't want to drop the shutter speed below 150th even though I was dealing with a pretty much non-moving subject. And then this was the main shot that I used. So let's dive into post-production. So the first thing I had to do was compositing work. The right part of the shoulder or the jacket had to be laid on top of the actual portrait shot. Using a very simple and pretty straightforward method, top layer is the correctly lit jacket, so I just used the erase brush tool and erased everything I didn't need from that top layer. So underneath the original portrait shot would show. Results look fine, but then again, with an obscured subject and a black background, this is quite the easy task actually. Let's merge the visible layers and let's call the resulting one base. Because that's the base we'll start from. Next up, jumping into the develop persona of Affinity Photo. What I'm doing here is basically trying to get as much brightness out of the image without blowing out the red highlights or messing up my nice infinite black background. Now I increase the clarity. In case of a portrait, this will emphasize all the little imperfections of the skin, which will give the subject a more rugged look. In case of a guy, that makes sense. You can very easily overdo this, so be careful. Copy-paste the base layer. Let's introduce some more lighting. The easiest way to do this is to use the dodge brush. This one simply allows you to selectively increase the exposure. So let's choose the right radius for the job and go to town. What I want to do is emphasize his face, especially the eye area. Then some final adjustments on the forehead and the mouth area and I'm done. Yup, nice results. With portraits in general, sometimes you just gotta dodge and burn your way to success. Let's rename this Lighting Face, copy-paste the layer and name it Lighting Halo. 
Again using the dodge tool, this time to emphasize some highlights on the jacket, emphasize the collar and the hair. Be careful with this, less is more. You know the drill, copy the layer, naming the new one Lighting Eyes. Again using the dodge tool, this time adjusting the size to the size of the eyes and brightening them up. Quite the awesome effect and super easily achieved. Copying the layer, naming it Lighting Eyes 2. Creating a layer mask. and selecting Multiply for the Blend Mode of that layer. Selecting the mask and hitting Ctrl-I to invert it. Let's choose the simple paintbrush and set it to white. We're looking for very subtle changes, so reduce the opacity. And now let's just darken the eyelashes and the eyebrows a tiny little bit. Well, looks good. Now let's do it for the other eye. Let's check the results. Nice, we're done. Merging the two layers that I used to light the eyes. Calling that one Eyes Merged. Copy-paste it and naming the new one Beard. Selecting the Clone Stamp tool, reducing the flow and setting the size. Now hold down Alt to select the area to clone. And then, basically, just go to town until you think your results are good. Clone stamping usually means working on the same area multiple times to get it right. So don't get frustrated, it's the same for all of us. Results looking good. Let's copy and paste the beard layer, naming the new one Skin. Selecting the Clone Brush tool, I will also reduce the flow rate and the opacity. Because when it comes to retouching skin that hasn't been made up, usually the emphasizing will yield better and more natural results than trying to get rid of imperfections completely. If you want truly perfect skin, you have to have a good makeup artist on set or be a diehard expert in Photoshop. With de-emphasizing alone, you will make a noticeable difference while still employing a pretty simple method. Result, skin looks cleaner, but overall the talent remains naturally looking. Copy and paste the skin layer. One last layer, lighting final. Using the dodge tool one last time to brighten up the face a little bit more. Perfect. Selecting the develop persona. Then going to Details, Detail Refinement to set the sharpness. A high radius and a moderate amount usually do the trick for me. In this case, 75 for the radius, 30 for the amount. Develop the thing. Employ the Dodge tool once more to brighten up the right eye to make it match the left one. Now in the original post, the key is rather green than blue. So I added a new adjustment layer called Color Balance and added more green. And that really did the trick. I created a mask on that layer, made sure the paintbrush tool was selected, selected black as the brush color, Set the opacity and the flow to 100 and the hardness to around about 35%. Adjusted the size of the brush. And then basically put a hole into the color balance layer, making the eyes blue again. And that worked just fine. 
One last merge of the top two layers, calling the resulting one final, and it's done. Before, after. Before, after. Nice. And here we go, side by side. Now it's not perfect. The key should have come in higher to cause more shadows under the brow ridge, the nose, and on the neck. Also, I should have employed the burn tool to create more contrast on the face in general. I should have given the specular highlights a more vertical orientation instead of being focused on the eyes, the brow ridge and the nose. Still, considering this is my first try at remaking a portrait in the style of someone else, I think the results are at least acceptable. Why don't you tell me what you think in the comments? Now you already know what RGB lights can and cannot do. So here's what's important about this one. Lots of them are plastic. This one, metal, heavy duty. Lots of them have an on off button with a status LED that draws power. This one has a solid on off switch. Lots of them are chargeable on the fly via micro USB, but with reduced brightness. With this one, USB-C charging on the fly, full brightness. Now it doesn't pack enough kick to significantly lift a background if there's already a decent amount of light present. But that's the same across the board of manufacturers whenever we're dealing with a form factor as small as that of the R1. Now of course if there's little to no light, you are gonna get some results, but in general these lights aren't meant to illuminate larger spaces. None of them are. Also, it doesn't pack enough kick to serve as a fill in a backlit situation during the day. In the evening, perfectly works. And since I'm sure you want to know, yes, it is strong enough to light a subject as the key, obviously strong enough to be used as a fill. And of course, you can use it as an edge light. Of course, you can manually control the hue as precise as one degree per step if you need to. And of course you get seven different funky RGB modes. So to finally wrap this up now, if you're looking for such a form factor, if you want portability, toughness and you need the RGB component, the R1 from Andy Cine is a great deal. You're for sure getting your money's worth. And I can't really think of anything to put this light down for, except maybe that I would like to have seen an additional quarter inch mount on this side instead of just the one on the bottom. But that's really marginal and never was a problem when I used it. It is simple to use, it's fun to use, and it offers all the features I want and need. So, should you be in the market for such a pocket RGB LED light, definitely check out the R1 from Andy Cine. I know it's a sponsored review, but the thing's just excellent. So, if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.